Human brain organoids, sometimes called mini-brains, are being grown in labs around the world. Now they're being fed specific neurotransmitters, they're competing with AI to solve non-linear equations, and they're going to space, next to Budweiser's space barley and 40 genetically engineered super mice. This research has probably been submitted for peer review, where other scientists look it over. But we don't have time to wait for that. We'll talk about three new preprints, meaning they haven't been officially published by a journal yet, so take them with a grain of salt. Most of the preprints posted here on BioArchive do go on to be published in a journal, and the preprints tend to be pretty close to the published versions, except for how clearly they summarize the key findings and important details. But that's why you watch I'm Curious. You may have seen that biological neural networks have learned to play Pong. Maybe you thought this was horrifying. Maybe you weren't impressed. Because newsflash, mini-brains, Pong is not that hard. The ball's gonna go there. It's not brain surgery. It's going in a straight line. But what if it was non-linear? Move over, dish brain, with your one layer of neurons. There's a new mini-brain mount called BrainAware. Living AI hardware, now in 3D. Why? According to the researchers, AI's not going fast enough. Moore's law about exponential hardware improvement is falling apart, and there's a problem called the von Neumann bottleneck. In a typical computer, the CPU and the memory are separate, so they have to keep sending information back and forth. You can kind of get around this problem with GPUs or graphics cards, which can do more stuff in parallel, but that only works for problems you can break down into a bunch of independent sub-problems. If you have really complicated problems to solve, you need a hardware revolution. And what could be better computing hardware than human brain tissue? It's the original neural network. It's energy efficient, and the storage is integrated with the processing, so there's no von Neumann bottleneck. Their high efficiency renders a human brain to be ideal hardware for AI. Okay. So to test it out, they plugged some organoids into the BrainAware system and used electrical stimulation to give them a complex math problem to solve. It's called a Henan map, and it's a chaotic dynamical system. It has non-linear behavior that makes it hard to predict over time, just like the real world that your brain has to learn about. They told the organoids about some states of the system and trained them to predict future states. The preprint doesn't include a lot of details, but apparently the organoids improved over four days with one training session per day. But are the organoids really learning? Most of the media coverage I've seen takes it for granted that this really is learning, and it's hard to blame them when that's what it's called in the headline of a big, respectable, peer-reviewed journal like Neuron. But I've heard some researchers privately express skepticism, for instance, the idea that this might just be some kind of chemical phenomenon rather than learning through changing the strengths of connections between neurons. That's called synaptic plasticity, and it's the inspiration for artificial neural networks. So to confirm that they're really learning through synaptic plasticity, these researchers treated the organoid with a chemical that blocks synaptic plasticity by blocking an enzyme called CAMK2. And the treated organoid stopped getting better at the task. So if these results are accurate, it looks like these neural networks are really learning to solve this nonlinear problem through synaptic plasticity, changing the strengths of their synaptic connections. So will these organoids be the next generation of computers? Madeline Lancaster, a pioneer in brain organoid research, says it's probably a stretch to compare brain organoids with current AI. BrainAware's performance wasn't that impressive compared to what digital AI can do. But BrainAware needed fewer rounds of training than the digital AI. After only four rounds of training, an organoid was competitive with an AI that had had 50 rounds of training. The authors say this reduced training time by over 90%, but that's a bit of a stretch, since an AI could do those 50 rounds super fast. But it's still pretty cool that the organoids didn't need as many rounds, and it probably has something to do with the way that processing and memory are integrated in a biological neural network. The researchers note some challenges for organoid research, including how long it takes to grow them and their various viabilities, which is science talk for lots of them die pretty fast. Right now, they can only see a few neurons on the surface with their electrode array, so they're looking into how they can interface with the whole organoid in the future. Thanks to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. I love sitting. Whether I'm working or relaxing, there's nothing I like better than a deep slouch. You might have heard that sitting is the new smoking, but that's too extreme. Standing all day isn't good either. 
What's good is flexibility, and now I can change it up with one tap whenever I feel like I need to. Pain in your back? Stand up. Feet getting tired? Sit down. I don't have to play whack-a-mole with weird pains anymore by constantly shifting my posture. If any of that sounds familiar to you, check out FlexiSpot. Mine's got these handy presets so I don't have to mess with it every time, USB ports to charge my phone and stuff, and a nice little drawer. For Black Friday and Cyber Monday, get up to 70% off and a chance to get your desk for free. Check out FlexiSpot's live streams for more deals. Scroll down to the link in the description to get an extra discount on my desk and so they know you came from I'm Curious. Use the code COMHARDDESK for an extra 5% off. That's C-O-M-H-A-R-D-E-S-K. Links in description. Okay, back to preprints. In the BrainAware study, researchers communicated with the organoid using electrical signals, but that's only part of the story of neural communication, which is electrochemical. Another part is that when the electrical current reaches an axon terminal, it can trigger the release of neurotransmitters like dopamine. Those neurotransmitters are released into the synapse, and if they bind to receptors on the postsynaptic neuron, they can trigger another electrical spike, or prevent a neuron from spiking. The electrical spike itself is a chemical phenomenon propagated by the flow of electrically charged particles called ions. If we want to understand how the brain works and how to treat brain disorders, we have to be able to study these neurochemicals and how they interact with the complex biology of brain tissue. Other researchers have soaked organoids in chemicals to see their effect. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter that tends to excite neural activity. This team gave organoids a glutamate bath and it increased their firing rate. But what if we could deliver precise amounts at precise times using an ion pump? That's what this new study did, starting with potassium ions and the inhibitory neurotransmitter GABA. Potassium ions are essential for maintaining a neuron's resting potential, the background level of electrical charge that determines how easily a neuron fires. The researchers used the ion pump to send potassium to the organoids for one minute at a time. Here's their baseline firing rate. Then they pump some potassium, and then they stop. Success! If you want to slow down neural firing, you might use an inhibitory neurotransmitter like GABA. As expected, pumping GABA reduced the firing rate. That's not a groundbreaking discovery, but it's a proof of concept that shows us the kinds of tools we'll have for the next generation of neuroscience. And what's more next generation than going to space? The third preprint says they got on a SpaceX shuttle to the International Space Station, along with 40 genetically engineered mice grown to have extra big muscles and some barley. NASA's stated goal with the mice is to develop treatments for the loss of muscle and bone that can happen in space and with various medical conditions. Anheuser-Busch's stated goal with the barley is to brew beer in space. Both admirable goals. They brought the organoids along so they could study the effects of microgravity, which affects all kinds of physiological systems, including the brain. The lab included organoids grown from the cells of patients with multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's disease, not to help astronauts, but out of their own selfish desire to study neurodegenerative disease. Not only did the organoids survive the trip to space and a month on the space station, but they looked more mature than the organoids that stayed on Earth, according to a gene expression analysis. They don't know exactly why, but they've already launched two more missions, with more coming up in 2024 to try to figure it out, and to hopefully develop ways to counteract the negative effects of microgravity on astronauts. Keep in mind, these are just preprints, so they haven't been published in a peer-reviewed journal, and you should be even more skeptical than usual of any findings or conclusions. Keep an eye on PubMed, and if you see any of these studies get published, let me know in the comments. Thanks again to FlexiSpot. Scroll down to the link in the description and use the code COMHARDESK. Subscribe to I'm Curious for more weird and educational science news, and go to patreon.com slash ihmcurious. Thanks for watching. As smart as we think we are, biology will always be smarter.